bring in their own debt. That's how bad it is. I mean, and the Chinese have been watching. You know, if they think they're just going to China and tell them some different story. All that they've been doing since they announced they're going on to an IMF program and trying to restructure the debt and the mess that they have created in restructuring it. Today, this group of people are in. Tomorrow, they are not in. Today, this one is in. I mean, flip-flopping. You know, if you can't manage even the restructuring of your debt, how can you manage the economy itself? So, going to China, you hear the mess they will go and create there with the Chinese to add to the already or uh, the compounded restructuring situation that we have here at the moment. But uh, good luck to them. So I mean, it, the, the country, the country is really struggling, and uh, we can do with any relief that 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 we'll get. But I'll tell you, they'll go and mess it up very soon. You hear, you know, the Chinese complaining you know, on 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 the part of the government they have included and the part that they have excluded. Like they've done to the domestic debt situation. Oh, so your concern is not about the fact that they'll face tough negotiation with China. Your concern is that they are incapable. They are absolutely incapable. And they have demonstrated it time and time again that this government, not only has this government bowed to the hilt and put us, all of us, in the panic situation that we're in, not only have they mismanaged this economy miserably, they are actually incapable of sorting it out, and they are even more incapable on, of restructuring debt. How hard can it be to restructure your debt? You are even incapable of restructuring your debt. So whether they go to China or go to wherever they want to go to, to you know, let's not forget about over fifty percent of our debt are owned to. Um, commercial commercial lenders, the 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 the, um, the euro bonds and all that that we have done that we have basically put on hold because uh, uh, we don't we don't even have a plan for that. So I mean, we hope that they go to China and something comes out of it. But I I, I can tell you that from the signs that I have seen uh, uh, on the at the moment. It tells me that they're just incapable of even restructuring the debt. And I would not be surprised that they should come from China and uh, we hear the stories that will come, that will follow them. Huh. Well, uh, that will follow them. because they, they just, they were just able to get, they said they got 80% of their target under the DDEP. Of course, uh, Honorable, you, you wouldn't have expected any resistance from uh, any of the entities involved. They were able to navigate those resistance and get something <laughs> reasonable. And you are saying that and, and that was incompetently look handled. At they, look at what they did in, in putting that together. Look at the mess they created, the harassment they have caused pensioners, the harassment they have caused individual bondholders. This is a straightforward thing. You are doing the $37 billion. It's the debt that qualifies to go on the, uh, the DDEP. You couldn't do that. Initially, you did not include the pension people, and you did not include the individual bondholders, and you have your 37 billion. Now, the pension shouldn't have been included in the first place. So if you have realized that, and you've taken the pensions out, the pension is 27.5 billion. If you take that out of the 137, you are around 110, 109.5, 110000000000 billion. That 110 billion would have given you the 80%. So... If the, the, the bondholders were not included, and even if the pensions were excluded completely, you would have done 80%, which was supposed to be the threshold that they should have met. Now, they went through all this mess. This one is in, is out, is in, is out, only to end up with around, around about 80%, 80-something, 80 or 85%. So it tells you how incompetent this government is. They cannot even manage restructuring of debt. This is where we are. Because listening to you, you've just painted the hopeless situation for me because I, I know the capacity with which the, the capacity the Chinese have built over the years and the kind of negotiators they bring to the table. Even countries like America are afraid of them uh, when it comes to negotiating. Uh, and China has taken people's ports, has taken ports in Africa. Uh, in those kind of negotiations. And you're saying that the people we are sending are not, are not capable of even sitting down with local bondholders, talk less of China. Yeah, 
I mean, can you imagine? You know, you are you are you are you are sending your your featherweight to go and to go and battle with your heavyweight. Really? You know, to, to, to go into a heavyweight bout. I said this government is incompetent. Now they've gone beyond the incompetency of not being able to manage the economy. They've gone beyond the incompetency of 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 borrowing. Now they are incompetent in restructuring. That's what the incompetence is. And I'm just telling you, the, the, the amount of bond that was supposed to go into the domestic thing was 137 billion. Okay? That, at that time, included the pension funds, but excluded the, the individual bondholders. Now, if the negotiation with the IMF is that if you get 80% of this, you are good to go. And the pension people, the pension people that you included, which is basically 27.5 billion that you included, and it was done wrongly because the pension is basically a social, some kind of a you know a social a social fund, and it is wrong to include a social fund of that nature into this. So you got it wrong the first time, but you have gotten it right by excluding them. Now you go back and you want to include individual bondholders that you have excluded in the first place. Who will accept that? You come to me and say, my brother, you are not included in this thing I'm doing. And I say, oh, thank you very much. Then you come the next day and say, oh, now I'm included. I mean, what a mess. And it was not needed. You didn't need the pension fund. You didn't need the individual bondholders. You still would have got to eight, eight. I'd have to say, demonstrate to you. If you take uh, um, 27.5 billion out of 137 billion, it's 109.5. That's, you know, 110. And as a percentage of the total amount, it's 80%. So you have achieved your 80% without including the pension, including the... Why then would you go through all the mess you have gone through to end up with 80-something percent? And then now, the people you say can do this voluntarily are the bondholders, uh, uh, are the, uh, the pension funds, and then, and then the individual bondholders. The individual bondholders is 15.5 billion. The pension is also 27.5. When, when you put the two together and you look at between 80% which they would have gotten initially to the 85 or something that they have obtained now, if you look at the difference and work it out in percentage terms, it means that out of the 27.5 plus 15.5, if you put that together, almost about 40 billion, they only got 2.48 billion out of that. So this whole mess, this whole, um, we are going tomorrow, we are coming today, all this, they have demonstrated. Harassed people, people picketing, and all the things that they have done. They did not achieve anything. They got only 2.48 billion out of 27.5 billion of the pension and uh, 15.5 billion when you put the two together. This is what they got out of this. What a waste of time. These are your negotiators going to China. God help us. That said, you do agree with the minister when he calls China the big elephant in the room. That needs to be dealt with. <laughs> they have a lot of big elephants. <laughs> they don't even know which one to point out to. 50% of your debt is with your bonds. They are not big elephants. They don't know what you're, what, what you're talking about. 50%, over 50% of your debt is with the euro bond market or, or with, the, with the capital market. That's also a, a big elephant. So there are big elephants are many. There are big elephants are many. Not only, you know... Hmm. What, what can we realistically get out of China? What can we... Oh, well, we, we, we want to make an attempt. Maybe China will tell us you know, we should hand over our goods. You know, these guys are very quick to trade commodities for things. So they will go and they will tell them that, you know, let your people continue the, let our people continue the guarantee in your country, ship all the goods to us, and they will forgive you your debt. And then they will come and point a nice thing to this and come and tell us that they have negotiated something fantastic with China and uh, that will not involve money. It will involve just sending goods to China and China for giving us all their debt, which they are dealing with the oil at the moment. Hopeless, hopeless situation, my brother. So hopeless. you see that as a possibility. The only way out is for this government to basically 
on his own accord, just say, look, we can't handle this anymore. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are failed. We have failed. So... But, but that, doesn't, that, that, that doesn't seem realistic because the last time the finance minister was before parliament, mm -hmm. uh, he said he's not going to run away from the problem. Well, whether he runs away from the problem or he doesn't run away from the problem, it doesn't solve the problem for us. I mean, the country is in dire situation. We have a, a hopeless government, you know, running on top of all this, causing more mess to the already mess that they have created. And they said they want to clean up their own mess. Radio gold. I mean, they don't even know where to start from. They touch this and they move on to this. We are dealing with domestic debt. We are going to deal with this. We are going to China. We are going to... And they say it's a big elephant in the room. Okay. They should go and slaughter the elephant. Mm. I mean, Ghanaians will slaughter the, the, the real elephant very soon. And then, uh, perhaps during attention, this might give you some hope because this is the IMF managing director. She says this, mm -hmm. quote, we are working hard to press for debt resolution for these countries and we've engaged with the traditional creditors, the Paris Club, the non-traditional mm -hmm. creditors, China, India, and Saudi Arabia. Our call yeah. is very simple. Urgently, yeah. we have to act. It is the IMF getting involved without, without yeah, improving yeah. our bargaining power in any way. The IMF is getting involved in a lot of countries who, as a result of the COVID and the Russian war, have, 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 you know, have some challenges. Ghana is at the bottom of that ladder. In bottom? Terms of the, way, and the ladder of countries who are struggling as a result of the COVID and all that, that they, you know, um, this government has used as its main excuse. Don't forget that the COVID and things happened. It affected every part of the world. And therefore, a lot of developing countries or emerging economies are suffering, you know, to some degree, uh, with their debt and all that. But those ones are in a position where you can successfully do some serious negotiations for them. And, and it, 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 it can be explainable. In our situation, we have been the cause. Ours is not Russian-Ukraine war, you know, destroying our economy. It's a, as a result of we destroying our economy and Russia and Ukraine war and COVID coming to expose us. So that, that was the, 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 the order of arrangement in that regard. So ours is a basket case. So there yeah. are some that look much more likely to resolve, easier to resolve than ours. Uh, we, are, we are like the West. Absolutely. I mean, when you are the West, one, among the worst performing currencies in the world, you have the highest inflation, you know, among the highest inflation, you know, in the world, you, you, you know, you, 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 everything you talk about, about Ghana, is not a good story. So, I mean, I don't know if there's another term for a basket case, a, a worse term for a basket case, but uh, we are probably going beyond a basket case. If you do not agree that China is the big elephant in the room, because you said, let them go and kill the elephant, let's see, which means that you disagree with that suggestion. Which one is the big elephant in the room? I, I'm, so yeah, I'm telling you that for fifty percent of your external debt is with the euro bond or the capital market. So the biggest elephant in the room is the euro bond market or the capital market. Yeah, over fifty percent, and then the rest are among multilaterals and bilateral. But fifty over fifty percent, and those who have the power to downgrade you, which they have doing consistently, is the capital market. So if you're looking at a, 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 the biggest elephant in the room is the capital market, which they have put on hold and have not come up with any idea on how they are going to renegotiate, renegotiate that, that debt or how they are going to, yes, uh, do that. So they don't even know who the, the big elephant is. <laughs> um, Unless we owe China more than we owe the capital market. Yeah, and I know... Or maybe China, or of course, maybe bought into the... They have managed with the banks that have, you know, also invested in the euro bond. But tackle your capital market and get these rating agencies off your back so that... Because they send signals. Those signals, negative signals about you will go down. Those are the things. Yes, China is important, so is the UK, so is all the people who own money too. But tackle the big one. 
the external debt in terms of your capital market. Do some serious things that the market will look at and say, look, this guy is tightening up, telling us to tighten our belts. They are also tightening their ass in terms of the expenditure spending and all that. But you can't loosen your belt and tell pensioners and people who have not contributed to the mess you have created that they should tighten their belt and that they should take it or leave it and that you are giving them a voluntary, you know, whether they should sign up to terms or not sign up to terms. Yes, you are just continuing with your lifestyle. You are continuing with your huge expenditure. You are added about $80 billion to our expenditure in 2023. So are you really serious in doing anything about the situation that you are in? And the answer is no to these people. You will be surprised you think that, oh, Ghana is doing a better. So why are these people still downgrading us? You, in your mind, you think they are doing something. Everything they are doing is cosmetic because the big things that they need to touch, they are not touching them because they want to continue to be comfortable. But it's okay for them, for others to suffer. For somebody who has worked so hard for this country, all their working life, and have put some money away for their own age, for their medications and all that, they should take the haircut and uh, all the, you know, uh, 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 rubbish that is being thrown at them. But yet you want to continue to go and, and come up with some cosmetics. We have reduced fuel by this. We have cut coupons by all these, you know, mediocre things that they are doing. And now they are going to be China to negotiate. <laughs> Who is going, by the way? I hope it's not Kenu for that oh, from the From the quote I read to you, he said, we, we. We, okay. Yeah, so I'm well, assuming he is he leading the team. finance minister, so he, he probably will be leading that delegation. But, uh, I mean, this is a beleaguered, discredited finance yes. minister. He has no credibility. So if he is the one leading the negotiation, then we are sending, you know, a delegation of, of, of no hook. They may be able to get something from China, but the question you should ask yourself is that how expensive will that negotiation be to us? And these people are quick in, you know, throwing the, the, the family silver at any problem. So they will come. Uh, by the way, they were supposed to give Chinese, China some bauxite. So is that one of the things they are going to negotiate? But uh, instead of bauxite, maybe we'll, we'll give them manganese. <laughs> I have no idea. And, and and that is and that is the point I was coming to. Yeah. Uh, because I'll call your your group, the minority in parliament, raised several concerns with that whole arrangement. Said that 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 claim of butter did not add up, and ultimately it seems that has been added to our debt. Uh, yeah, it won't be because you know we contracted. Um, some loans to do some projects which nobody knows where the projects are or where, where we are with those projects. So once we've contracted that, it becomes loan. What you are going to pay with it doesn't really matter. You know, whether cash or depending on what the, your lender has agreed for you to say, we said we'll pay with bauxite. We were told it's a butter trade. It is no butter trade. The butter trade is almost up for us to pay. And the, 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 the um, what is it called that we're going to pay with? The bauxite is still on the ground. All the things they told us about and how they are going to add value to the bauxite and all that hasn't hasn't happened yet. So I don't know what we're going to pay with. I mean, maybe we will we'll start uh, paying for things with, 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 I don't know, calorie or whatever it is. Uh, maybe we'll get, give away the bauxite deposit. Then the Chinese well, will come and mine it themselves. Well, that would not surprise me. And that's what I told you, that very soon they will tell us that all good, all our minerals here, when they take it straight to China. The Chinese might probably come and build a train from here to China so that they put it on the conveyor belt and then straight is, is, is gone. It is worrying speaking to you that uh, um, you, you've left me a little <laughs> well, hopeless this morning. I would like to be the prophet of doom, but uh, the situation is a, is a, is a very bad one. And let me end by asking whether that is why you in the minority have decided to take the unprecedented step of rejecting ministers which you are vetting, who doesn't come across as so bad to occupy the position. Well, it, is, it is all part of the cost. The, the ministers are all part of the cost. We want to cut down. So everything that we can do in our power to bring the debt down, we will do. The government has failed to do anything you know, themselves. So we will have to take the bull by the horn. We are the legislators. 
and we, we, we should be counted. And uh, probably we, we have not done enough. And now we should, because things are getting worse. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Yeah, I can already come to your studio sometime. We have, we have some caucus meeting and I have to. Okay. 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 Right. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. you so thank much. you for making time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Honorable Kweku Rikis Hagan, Member of Parliament for Cape Coast South. Uh, always interesting speaking to him on matters of finance. He is one of those who used to tell me that Senator, if you look at the numbers, if you understand the numbers, you'll be worried. Those of you who do not understand the numbers, I envy you. Because me, when I look at the numbers, I get confused uh, where we are headed to. But before we move on further with the discussion, don't mm -hmm. forget the 60 plus I care day is getting closer by the day. It's 7th March 2023 to Friday, 10th March 2023. So it starts on 7th March. So it's close. If you are 60 years and above, if you are 60 years and above, and you have need for an eye exam, glasses or eye medication, and you have not registered for this program, I'll give you, call this number now and register. 54 054-32-87-008. 054-32-87-008. If you're even listening to me to in Santro Kofi, uh, for Lulu Billy Queen, the Enclave. Don't worry, I'm, I can I can bet you transportation that you spend coming here to be part of that program will be less than what uh, you will gain because eye care is very expensive. That's why Ted Ike and Vision Center has decided to offer our veterans, our pensioners, 60 years and above, something to celebrate our independence with. They are offering you free eye drops, free comprehensive eye examination, free blood pressure and body mass index measurements, 50% discount on lenses, 50% discount on spectacle frame, 50% discount on glaucoma labs, that is OCT, VFT and Fandus photography, 50% discount on fasting blood sugar. Like I said, the time is approaching 7th March to 10th March. So please call the number I gave you and register now. Because on those days from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day, if you go to any of the third eye care clinics, the first one North Ridge on the premises of Sunny FM, the second one Airport Residential Area close to Association International School opposite the Mirage Residence. If you go to any of those uh, clinics, oh, they will take care of you. Take very, very good care of you. If you are getting 50% discount on spectacle frames, take it. If you are getting 50% discount on lenses, take it. I'm telling you, 50, that 50% is a lot of money. So please take note and take advantage. And don't forget to pass on the information. Your friends who are 60 years and above all need to know about this so they can all take advantage of it. It's very, very important. Ted Eye Care and Vision Centre, they remain your total eye care solutions provider. And, and let me go through a few of the messages. This is quick. Newton says, a, a good morning. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to Tala, to Abdul Karim. Hey, Afewa. You can advise us to take care, but stay ho at home is another matter. And as before, he says, NDC requested for reshuffle and now don't want to approve the nominees. Hey. Mm. Regards to Honorable. Is it that Parman Kran? So, uh, and as for fool, I think you are misunderstanding what the NBC requested for. NBC requested for a reshuffle, they requested for a reduction in the size of government. Which government is not heeding to? Government is maintaining that size. They have not reshuffled the government. What they are doing is filling space that has been, uh, the force majeure spaces that has been created within the government. People left the government. That's why they are filling those spaces. They've not done any reshuffle to anybody. Kobla Kobla says a good morning. Um, you see why I said the busy body attorney general is a perfect candidate for. <laughs> I hear you. There's also Habib Grace who's joining us. Isaka is watching us. Radio Gold, good morning. There's Kobla Kobla Nancy. Uh, don't mind them. We shall bounce back. Idrisu Adamu says, guys, stop worrying Nancy about Liverpool. Uh, Lawrence uh, Koko is also joining us. Good morning. Good morning to Frank Adoya Ochesena. 
morning. Oh, morning now, huh? Frank. Good morning. And a good morning to Solomon. And she said, We saka. Sena, Ghana is broke. More hardship is coming. Kakali Elikem Klenam. Good morning. A good morning to Idrisu Adam. So the IMF is supporting the creation of more millions of people in Ghana only to pave way for three billion dollars loan. Amenyavi Steven says Kenofoyata, the shameless borrower. Say this, Sana, I live in Japan. China will not give money free. They will make sure our raw materials will replace their body. Godfrey Dalomote says a good morning to us and everybody who believes in Radio Gold. Thank you, Godfrey. Okay, this one, Adamu says, China will only agree on debt cancellation only if we exchange it with one of Ghana's strategic assets. Shukura Sani Akime is also joining us. There's, is it Cha Tembu Babayara says, Sikanuashi, massive freedom. Nothing to show for the money borrowed. Say the Isaka. So our leaders are always looking for cheap money. That's what they like. Going to IMF and World Bank for loans. We cannot utilize our resources to survive. Uh, Abdul Salam Habib says exactly what Ghana is supposed to be. Lending money to African countries if you could only have honest, patriotic, and visionary leaders. leaders. In fact, that is how it's supposed to be. Silas at the Senate, I trust you are aware that the Kinky Party is next after the borrowing. Hmm. Uh, China needs more raw materials from Africa to develop their country. That's why they give cheap loans to Africa. Africa leaders, wise up. Tete K. Apadido is saying a good morning to us. Ricky Vivier says, I greet you. There's Papa, Papa Riz, which says, Ouch. When I heard Dr. Salifu say, This government has listening issues. I swear, I felt it in my esophagus. <laughs> say this again. again. does not care about debt. He has two years. To exit. Who cares? Next government will face all the consequences. Musa Batwa is joining us. It says, when you try to expose corruption and nepotism, they use all questionable means to fight you back. Nowhere in the world will Victor Kusibuatin is the same as Kubuna and Dujefi without going through proper procedure as enshrined in the constitution. The contempt charges brought against Honorable Okujato Ablakwa is just a face-saving gimmick. God save Ghana. Enoch, Enoch in Asamake says, says, due to economic mismanagement led by President Kufo Adwa and his finance minister, Kenofoyata, Ghana is now downgraded to Nippon Senshi. And here we are today. MPP never again. <laughs> what an interesting one. Nana Yauchunibua Asamoa has something for the two of you. No, Boachi does not speak Chinese. I say, How do we say this in Chinese? Me no, Demi Amna. In Chinese language. Uh, just that one there you do not know. Because it's Chan Ho Ho Baba. Now my boss here. What is it? Is that Chinese? Uh, who is that? Oh my God. Oh my God.